Hello, how y'all doing on today? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And on today, I'm going to be talking from a series entitled Good Eats. Good Eats. And um, I will be talking spiritually about how good the word of the Lord is and, and the nutritional value that it adds to us as Christians. And I will be talking to you from the topic, Steak and Shake gospel the stake and shake gospel and if you want to know what i'm talking about what in the world is she talking about please stay tuned my name is nichelle and these are my notes Well, I hear that song. I just, I hear it. I could just, how they say up above my head, there's music. I hear that song. I know God is a good God. And they come back and respond, respond with, yes, he is. He is a good God. And even the Bible speaks of, um, uh, about tasting, to taste and see that the Lord is good. And I will be talking probably in a three-part series entitled Good Eats. Good Eats. Uh, and we are coming up on Thanksgiving where we do a whole lot of eating. And so we're, God's going to help us this season by his grace. We're not going to eat as much as we normally do. And I do speak by faith, but that's our goal. <laughs> so we want to talk about eating on today. And I want to talk to you from the subject, the steak and shake gospel. The gospel of the steak and shake all right so and if we uh it will be you know bible basis basically coming from corinthians uh first corinthians where we have paul paul as we know he writes letters uh they did not have email they did not have you know they weren't texting they didn't even have a cell phone and what he did he would write letters he was the chief apostle and he would check on these uh brothers and sisters they had you know where churches had been starting church congregations where they would gather together and he would write letters to correct them letters to encourage them letters to inspire them and what have you and um when i was doing a little research he wrote exactly four letters uh, at varying times to the Corinthian church. And I want to talk about uh, Paul when he wrote a letter talking about milk and meat. Talking about, um, and, and he's comparing nutrition to spiritual nutrition. Spiritual nutrition. The Bible does tell us as Christians that we are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, once we have accepted Jesus to be our personal Lord and Savior, and you know, we have prayed and we've asked, we repented of our sins and we've confessed with our mouth and we have believed in our heart, then after that, we are to grow. We're to grow. We're not just, you know, we're like newborn babes that have to be cared for and have to grow up. And so he talks about milk and meat. Now, when the Bible, and I will list these scriptures, when the Bible talks about uh, milk, um, taking, drinking milk, which means like just the elementary form of the word of God, just your basic gospel, um, that's for babes. That's for those of you who have just accepted Jesus into your life and, and you have so much to learn or, you know, you, you've been out in the world and, you, you know, you've got the residue of the world on you've been, you, you've been carnal for years or for long periods of time or um, maybe all, most of your life until up to recently. And now you come to the Lord, um, you come to the Lord or, or you come back and uh, recommit yourself to the Lord and, and you are considered... Um, if you will, a babe, a babe in Christ. So you're on the milk of the word. Um, you're not taking advanced studies. You're not learning the Hebrew and the Greek. So, you, you know, you're you're on the milk of the word. 
and that is understandable. You're on the milk of the word, just like my grandson is on milk. He's a nursing infant, and we do not give him fried chicken, and we do not give him green salad and all of that. He's not even on applesauce. He is on milk. He is on milk, and, um, and he gets quite happy with that, quite full with that um, on milk because he's an infant. And so as Christians, if you've just come to the Lord and you don't really know very much about it and you're growing, you are on the milk of the word. Then you have those that you've been saved for a while and um, you know, you, uh, you've been reading the word of God for quite some time. You've been sitting under some good uh, Bible teaching and and perhaps you have accepted, uh, you have been filled with the Holy Spirit and so on and so forth. And so you are no longer a babe in Christ. There are, you're going through tests and trials and, and you are expected, you know, to have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. And you understand that you should not be committing adultery. You should not be lying. Um, there are certain things that you already know because you've been... Uh, a Christian long uh, for quite some time then and so we would say that you're on the meat of the word or you should be on the meat of the word um, you can uh, uh, you can understand the basics and a little bit more in the word of God you understand that you are to be a doer of the word of God and not just a hearer only the Bible even speaks uh, Bible scripture speaks about a time where God winks he winks at certain things because he understands that person is growing. He understands they may not understand. It's kind of like if um, if I took my uh, granddaughter who's under the age of five, if I took her into a store and when I wasn't looking, she grabbed a ball or something and, um, and we were on our way out and I didn't realize that she had picked it up off the stand or what have you. Uh, most times... Um, uh, if, if I genuinely, I did not know that she had it and I didn't pay for it, most times people would wink at it because they understand that that is a person that is growing and they have to understand, she has to understand that we have to pay for it. We can't just walk out with it and what have you. And so you have those two categories. You have those that are on milk and you have those that are on meat. meat. Then you have those that they are not an infant you know, by the amount of time they have been a Christian, um, that they've been around the word for a while and so on and so forth. And, and, and maybe no, maybe they have not accepted their calling. Maybe they're not, they're not on meat, but they should be. They should be eating some form of meat. They should have be on meat, but they're not. And in, um, in Corinthians, Paul is writing a letter and he says, some of you by now, by now should be on me. You should be teaching the word of God. You should, you know, you should, you should be enjoying a, a, a good thick steak, but no, you are not because you are still drinking milk. You're still on milk. You're still a babe. And you know, um, so it is in Christendom in our, you know, every day you have those that um, they'll tell you real quick, you know, I've been saved, you know, and, and, um, I was baptized back in 1965, you know, if, uh, I, this happened and that happened and, and they'll tell you about, you know, my great, great granddaddy laid the cornerstone for that building. And you see that pew right there, my family back, back in so-and-so, whatever time, Back in the day, they purchased that pew and what have you. And they will literally, you know, stand on it like it really makes them a spiritual giant. But it does not. So you do have those who, um, they're on milk, but they really should be on meat. And let me explain with a natural example. Using my, I, I have been learning so many spiritual lessons just watching my uh, two grandchildren. One is, one is an infant and one is under the age of five. She's a toddler. And so, uh, again, the infant is on milk, but my uh, granddaughter, she um, she eats, she has teeth. She has quite a few teeth and she eats. She Now, we would not give her a steak because she's a toddler 
And even when she does eat something that has a meaty substance, we will take it and cube it up or we'll make sure that it's, it's in bite-sized chunks so that she does not choke. So because she eats, she now requires more than milk to survive. You know, she will drink milk and occasionally we do catch her grabbing up her brother's bottle and such, <laughs> but, um, um, but she does that because there is a part of her that at times wants to revert back to being her brother or her brother's age, I will say, that wants to revert back to being, she sees him being babied and, he, and she sees him being carried and such. And even though she enjoys walking and she enjoys eating her applesauce and her peaches and, and her oatmeal and such, at the same time, ever so often, she wants to have a tantrum and she wants to go get his things in. And just the other day, she had his clothes on and, and just tried to have them on. She tried to put them on. She forced herself into parts of them. Or she'll grab up the pacifier, what have you. So there's a part of her that where she should go ahead and sit down and eat her own food, there's a part of her at times that wants to be on the milk just for the attention of it. Just That's just toddler behavior. So it is. We have that many times in our church, among our church congregations. We have those that um, they want the title of being, you know, mature and on stake. They, they want to put their foot down as if, you know, um, they're so uh, mature in the Lord. But you can tell so many times that they're on milk. They're on the milk of the word. And, and here Paul you know, in his um, writing to the Corinthian church, he's saying, you should be teaching the gospel. You should be. And I want to pose a hypothetical question to all of the listeners is what happens? Why is it that we get stuck in a place where we are not growing? Um, we may think we are but yet we're in a state of toddlerhood, um, spiritual wise, why is it that we are still on milk? And why, you know, because if you can imagine, if you can imagine each and every one of us, hypothetically, we would be so malnutrition, so malnourished, I should say, if we never ate anything more if, if we just stayed on milk, I'm not talking about someone that, um, and I, I want to be sensitive that maybe in a hospital and, and, and they're, you know, they give them their uh, feeding through a tube or what have you. Those are different type of circumstances. But I'm saying you're up and you're walking and you're going to work and you're doing this and you're doing that and all you drink is milk. That would be so unsatisfying and um, and it would not support your health in a, such a way for you to be able to, to do the things that you do from day to day. Yet, if we're not careful, we will, after having accepted Christ, we will be in a state where we're still on milk, um, where we can't take correction, you know, can't, you know, no one can correct us in and around our congregation. Uh, we're not steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. We're definitely not faithful. Um, our leadership, uh, when you're in that state, can your, your leadership really can't depend upon you to, um, to do certain things because they don't know if you're going to do it or not. You may do it. You may not do it. It just all depends. It's just like uh, my granddaughter sharing or not sharing. There are days that she's you know, wants to share with grandma and she wants to play. And then there are days when she takes her toy and takes off running and uh, thinks it's funny. So as Christians, we ought to desire to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We, we should desire to go to our uh, Sunday morning or whatever day of the week you worship uh, whatever your main day of worship, where you have your Bible study and and your and you hear your preached word and what have you, we ought to desire to be there, taking on the Word of God. We ought to desire to study, 
to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We ought to desire that. We ought to hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's more than just drinking a shake. It's, 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 um, we have to head toward the meteor matters, um, because God wants to use us. We, we need that protein of the word, the, the protein from preaching and such. We, we got to be able to take something, you know, um, God, he needs strong Christians, you know, and, and yes, it is a, a, a process and it is, and it does take progress, but we have to put ourselves in that situation to be able to do so. Just like a toddler, you, you begin to teach them things. We're beginning to teach colors and one, two, threes and so on and so forth because you are, as that child grows, they're expected to learn more. They're expected to learn more. My grandson, after a time, he's, you know, milk is not going to suffice. He's going to need more. He's going to need more. And we're, we're willing to give him more because that's what it takes to grow. So I want to encourage you. You know, there are some good eats in the word of God. I want to encourage you to taste and see that the Lord is good. I want to encourage you to, you know, to put that baby bottle down and to get somewhere and grow. Get somewhere and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of you should be teaching the word of God by now and not just teaching it uh, from what you know book as far as book knowledge, but you should be teaching it by the way you live your life, being a doer of God's word and not a hearer only. So I just want to encourage you to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Nichelle and these are my notes. Mm -hmm.